Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will show you how to use source control or revision control in Unreal Engine 5.3 together with GitHub. So let's start with the question, what is source control? Source control allows you to collaborate in a team. It allows you also to backup files and to sync between computers. Source control also gives you more freedom to experiment because you can change files in your project without breaking everything. Source control makes it basically easy to restore certain versions of your projects. So there are many source control solutions out there. So there is Git, there is Perforce, there is Plastic, and there is SVM. All of them are different source control solutions. In this video, we will take a look at GitHub, which is part of Git. But GitHub is not the only solution that works with Git. It's one part of the big Git ecosystem. So there are plenty of alternatives to GitHub, and there are also complementary applications that work pretty nice with it. In this video, we will use GitHub to host our files, and we will use AnchorPoint to upload and download our files to GitHub. We use AnchorPoint because it can handle Git LFS pretty easily for us and because it understands Unreal Engine files. So let's start with creating a GitHub account. All right, go to github.com and then click on sign up if you don't have a GitHub account. Then we need to fill the form and enter our email address. For the username, I recommend using the similar one that you use for the email. So GitHub doesn't allow you to use dots, but you can replace them with other characters. Good, then click on continue, click on continue and do some annoying verification. And finally, create an account. You can skip the personalization and now you are in your dashboard. So the first thing that we need to do on GitHub is to make sure that we have enough storage. GitHub is a little bit picky when it comes to storage. It gives you one gigabyte of free storage and one gigabyte of monthly bandwidth. The storage is usually not a bottleneck, but it's definitely the bandwidth. Most Unreal Engine projects will need more than one gigabyte of bandwidth. So if you have, for example, a project of 200 megabytes and you have three members and they have to download it, they will consume 600 megabytes of bandwidth. So if you feel that you definitely need more than this one gigabyte of bandwidth, you need to purchase a storage pack on GitHub. And I will show you how to do this. So go back to your dashboard and then go to your settings. Then under billing and plans, you need to open this and then click on plans and usage. Then you need to scroll down to the bottom and then you see something like LFS data. And in this case, you can add more data. An LFS data pack costs $5 a month and it will give you 50 gigabytes of storage as well as 50 gigabytes of bandwidth. So depending on the project, make sure that you have enough storage packs ready here so that you can work smoothly with GitHub. All right, we go back to the dashboard but we won't create a repository here on GitHub because we will do this directly from AnchorPoint. I will show you how to do this. Go to anchorpoint.app slash download and then download the application for your operating system. After that, you need to install it. And once this is done and it will open up, you need to create an account. For that, use the same email address that you used for your GitHub account. Once you have done this, you will be here at the products page. The first thing you're gonna do is to connect AnchorPoint and GitHub. We scroll down and then click on connect application and we pick GitHub. We click on connect and you will get usually an authorization screen that you have to accept. And then once this is done, GitHub should be connected to AnchorPoint. All right, that's all we need to do. Let me close the settings here. And then now I click on create new project. So in this case, I have two options. The shared folder would be for your art assets, for your Blender, Substance and ZBrush files, which can be, for example, on a Dropbox or Google Drive. But for our case, we will pick Git repository because we just would like to version the Unreal Engine project. We click on that and then we click on browse to locate the folder. For me, it's under repositories, then under Unreal Engine GitHub tutorial. Now we'll select the folder. And AnchorPoint will automatically set a template for a gitignore. So what's that basically? So a gitignore file is a file that sits in your repository and it contains a list of folders and file extensions that will be excluded from being versioned. In this case, this is for example the derived data cache folder of Unreal and some others as well. Unreal creates a lot of temporary files and a lot of files that you need to build a game, for example. And you don't want to upload these files to GitHub because everybody creates these files on your own and you will just create clutter by uploading these files to GitHub. If AnchorPoint does not recognize this automatically, then simply open up a dropdown and click on Unreal Engine. And in the remote settings, we're gonna pick new GitHub repository. If you already have a repository on GitHub, and you can also connect via HTTPS and you can paste the link from GitHub here in this place. But for our case, we'll create a new GitHub repository. Now we click on continue. We we'll leave the name as it is. We we'll click on continue and again. And I don't want to invite members right now. I just would like to create the project. All right, so far so good. Now we are in a timeline. And the timeline is basically the place where you will see all your project versions. Here, you can also go back on all the versions and restore the files that you need because you maybe broke something by accident. But right now we only have the changed files here. We click on that and these are all the files 
of course, excluding the derived data cache on the other files. And what we're going to do right now is to make an initial commit. And this is the first time we're going to upload the files to GitHub and then press push. So what AnchorPoint is going to do right now, it's going to do all the things what Git is doing. It's staging, committing and pushing the files. So once AnchorPoint is in the pushing state, we can continue working on our Unreal Engine project. So let's get back to Unreal Engine. You notice that Unreal Engine has its own revision control UI. And with that, you can't connect to your revision control provider. So if you click on connect to revision control, we will have all the solutions available here. If you select the Git beta version, then because we already created the repository in Anchor Point, the Unreal Engine Git integration will take over the settings. So we simply need to just accept the settings and we're done at this point. Honestly, I don't recommend using the built-in Git integration in Unreal Engine. The reason is, after each save you do in Unreal, it will always submit this change to revision control and that will slow you down in your work. And you honestly don't need to do this. You can keep this disabled and at the end of the day, when you finish your work, you go to anchor point and simply submit your changes. There's one use case for the integrated revision control setting in Unreal. And this is if you would like to go for a single file history. For example, you would like to see the history of a specific asset, or if you would like to revert certain changes, there it makes sense to use the integrated Git solution in Unreal. But for now, we will simply disable it. All right. So if I move an object right now and I save it, then if I go to anchor point, and I go to the changed files, it's marked already yellow. You can see that this file got modified. And you can see also my editor, which means that this file gets also locked so that nobody is working on that while I'm working on this file to prevent basically conflicts. So in this case, you would simply add a message and then press push to submit this to GitHub. So that's one way of doing it. A bit smarter way of doing it is using the one file per actor feature in Unreal Engine 5. It was introduced in Unreal Engine 5 in the combination with world partition. Since Unreal Engine 5.3, the one file per actor can be also enabled on legacy maps. So if we go to world settings and search for external actors, and we can use external actors here, and then it will ask us to convert all actors to external packaging as well, and we simply click yes. What it created, it created 145 unsaved files. And if we save that, we have basically split up the whole map into single actor files. Why should we do that? So. Before, I was making a change and the change was stored in the map file itself. So I had locked the file and I had blocked it for anybody else. But right now, if I would work on the file, I'm only modifying the actors and another person can also work on the same map and modify other actors. So we can work at the same map at the same time without conflicting. So what happens currently in anchor point? So I have saved all these actor files. And if I go to anchor point, I have 145 files. And these little files are the little actor files. They're all the actors which are basically included in my map. So if we now add a message and press push, we now committed this change also to GitHub. And the good thing about version control is if something breaks for the conversion, we can always go back to an older commit. All right, let's work on that. So let me move the plant again and let me also move the crate. So if we go to anchor point right now, we go to the changed files, we have these two actors and these are locked only. So another person can move other objects in the map. We are not conflicting with each other. And this is great for collaboration because we are not blocking each other. And these actor files are very, very light. So we are in a very small amount of kilobytes here. So how to work then in a team? So first of all, we invite our team member to anchor point. We close the changed files, go to the product settings, go to members and assign a member. And here I enter the email of my team member. I'm sending her an invite. And by this, I'm inviting her to my workspace. Next step, I need to assign her to the project by simply clicking on assign to project. Anchor point will try to add this member to GitHub, but because it may cannot match the beginning of the email with the username of GitHub, you have to do this on your own. So it gives you the link to the repository. When I click on that, anchor point is opening up the proper GitHub page. And here I need to add my members. So I add people and then I enter her username and I'm adding her to the repository. So now she's got a pending invite, which means she will get an email from GitHub where she needs to accept the invite first and an email from anchor point that she has been also invited to the project. And that's all you need to do on your side. So here I am on Catherine's side. And the first thing I need to do is accept the invitation to GitHub. So I go to my email and check in the email of what I got from GitHub and then I need to view the invitation. If you get maybe a dialogue where you need to accept, it, then just accept it, then you will be forwarded to the repository here on GitHub. The second thing is we need to open up anchor point and you usually should get a pop-up like this where somebody is asking you to join 
a workspace. This can also be the case if you open up Anchorpoint for the first time. You maybe also need to enter your name in this case, but you will also have a blue button to join a workspace. So you simply click on join and then you will join the workspace of Matt Newman in this case. If you not land here, go to your projects overview and then double click on your project. All right, now I need to join the Git repository and I need to tell Anchorpoint where to download all the files. And for this, you need to have an empty folder. Then in the next step, check download everything and you will need to log into GitHub because you are joining the project for the first time. So if I click on join, I get this dialog here from GitHub and I can click on sign in with your browser because I'm already logged into GitHub. That's pretty easy, nothing is shown here, but the cloning should happen immediately. All right, now I'm in the timeline. I can see versions of Matt Newman. And if I will change files on the project, I will be notified that I have changed files here. Anchorpoint will lock them immediately so that Matt would not be able to override them. That's all about it. I hope this video could help you to use source control of GitHub on an Unreal Engine project.